Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to the last part of Sam Baird's Kokanee Seminar from Something Catching Kokanee Derby 2016. Sam's going to go into the last part of his section and then we will be wrapped up for this year's seminar. Thanks you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoy the rest of what Sam has to share. Take care and fish on. After the month of April, you will not see me at the monument, the state park, Metro Creek, 25 mile bottom of the monument, all the way to Lakeside, depending on where the fish are. That's the time thing. After that, I leave, I don't know, figure it out. <laughs> really, they'll stay down there. They'll stay down there until the pleasure boaters push you guys out. Then they turn and they head back. Uh, again, Jesse Brazil from Weekend Warrior Guide Service, he's told me about days of up limiting out on sockeye at Brewster, so we're talking July. And then after that, he's like, I don't want to go home. He heads up to Chelan and pounds out a limit of kokanee that he doesn't show off because he doesn't want anybody up there in the month of July and August catching them. But they're big. And so they'll go right on up to the end of August, in the first week of September, and be all sitting up there at the head of the lake with nobody messing with them. And you can go up there and have a good time. As long as you're transitioning, it's a 12-month season. You can always get on, folks. So... I know it's kind of all over the map of that, but it's something that I hope you guys can take something away from and help you to put more consistent numbers in the boat, maybe some bigger numbers. Does anybody have any questions at all? Uh, does it make much difference whether you're going up lake or down lake? Um, There's another guy that's sitting in this room right now named Mike Barr from Bill's Boathouse over on American Lake. And he was, we were talking one day, and he's like, well, you know, their eyes, and they want to go away from the sun, and I'm sitting there like, Mike, come on. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. You know, they're just in the water, and I'm going to catch them. But then by him telling me that, I started to, like, watch it while I'm out on the water, because, you know, it's like somebody that tells you you got, you know, a mark on your face or something, and now you're sitting there thinking about it all the time. And I'm like, I started to realize that as the sun's moving, it matters on where my boat is and how I'm catching fish. First slide of the morning, so the conclusion I've came to from looking into that this year, first slide of the morning, troll up lake. If you turn and troll down lake, you're literally wasting your time. You might pick up a couple here and there, but for the consistent numbers and size, troll up lake first thing in the morning. Basically, you're always going to catch more fish with your back, well, I troll like You want the back of your boat at the sunlight. Troll away from the sun. Run away from it as much as you can. When the sun gets up to like high noon, <laughs> high noon, it starts spinning circles. So I don't, you know, uh, I've done good just kind of going any direction. But what I've noticed though is those first, you know, let's say up till noon, run away from the sunlight. Uh, you had one more. What was your last one? Uh, what about the super bait that you have that you put in? Uh, I've, I've done tuna. I really like doing like uh, crushed up salad shrimp. Um, the other day, <laughs> I tried it at work, and it sounds like imitation crab meat. So honestly, I'm starting to think, does it matter? <laughs> Anything that smells fishy, um, you know, tuna is probably your cheapest option. That I know guys who don't put anything in them and just use the sponge and then you know dip them in a scent or. Uh, I like to put a little bit of meat in there. You know, a little bit of tuna starts coming out of there, a little bit of shrimp, you know, you might get a little bit of feed action on them. So I, I do stuff them. Uh, I've mixed up tuna for the derby. I'm going to run tuna during the derby for it. So, and I'm actually going to switch over to garlic tuna for it because they're getting a little aggressive now. So, yeah. The super baits are always 36 inches. No matter what you're. <laughs> And again, I have no idea why Scott Fletcher, I go, Scott, what, what length of leader are you running? He goes 36 inches. Last year during the derby, we hit 20 kokanee in two hours, and I'm not going to question 36 inch leader. <laughs> you know, basically, no matter what I run, Dodger-wise, even the new Leo flashers, I have been doing surprisingly well on Leos. Uh, I was, I was kind of skeptical. You know, Zach's been running. He was kind of skeptical. Now, all of a sudden, these fish are getting a little more active, and Zach's like, hey, dude, I've been catching them all. So even with that rotator, I still run 36 inch leader. Here's one other thing that I'll mention off this question is where I 
measure my leaders from. A lot of people measure from the hooks, as I believe Frank does. I measure from where I want the action given, which is the head of my baby. That's where I want the action. So like on Frank's flies, I measure to the front of the fly. Even if it has a shaker wing out front, I measure to the front of the fly, because that's where I want the action. On these, I measure from the front of the super bait. 36 inches up to my up to my dodger. Now you run a dodger in front of those? <coughs> I do. I have I tried not running them yet? No, I have not. So I always run them. Sling blade or the uh... I always run them. I don't like and again, people will catch a billion fish on double D's or uh, you know what, Les Davis's and all that, uh, SEPs. I don't like them because I believe it narrows your availability to speed up. They'll start to flip. So I always run the teardrops, I call them. And I like the small ones with the super baits. Again, I've only been running them for a couple years and I've had a lot of success, so I have a monkey with it. By all means, you might go out there, run them with a, with a double D and call me up and say, hey, you've got to switch. But I always run them with a, with a Dodger. Just because that's just another kokanee. You know, everybody's like, oh, oh, it's the flash and it's all that. It's a kokanee. This is a kokanee eating something that another kokanee wants to eat. That's all that is. You know, they, they, yeah, they'll see the flash and then they go, well, what do they think the flash is? They're not like, oh, a beaming flash of light delivering me corn. They're like, that's something eating what I want. So, I always run. It's an attraction. How about the same example when you're trolling? Like, trolling, curling? That right there is, like on Facebook, I get in arguments all the time. I don't wash my game. Don't worry about it. I think fish like steak. Tuna fish for kings, I'll run it 21 days before I change it up. It is refrigerated or iced. My corn, I'll run it over a week. I, it's, I don't believe in like keeping everything crystal clean. Well, when you get to the zigzag pattern, you've got guys out there that go, oh, you got a zigzag. Well, you know what that is? Their dad taught them that when they were trolling five feet deep for rainbow trout, he told you know, fish lake. Keep the bait out from behind the boat. But when I've got gear down 100 to 120 feet, personally, I don't believe those fish even care that I'm there. They're not leader shy. Why do I need to zigzag? I already know where I want to be. I know where I want to be. So I'm going to go from this waypoint to that waypoint. And I've caught fish all in between. So I go in straight lines. I really do. Now, if I want to turn or something, I'll make a big sweeping turn. Or sometimes that will trigger a bite of a non-aggressive fish. My thing is I'm out there looking for the aggressive fish, so I'm going there, you know. And so it's I do more of that with my control. I you know, I tell everybody I'm a 1.2 fisherman. I like going 1.2 no matter what. But I'm also the guy that when I go on a turn, I'm going 1.8 and all of a sudden all four lots go off. So I do more speed controls with my controller than I do with turning my boat. Which isn't with all fishers. Like Lake Wenatchee, I look like a drunk sailor out there driving that thing. I mean, I'm doing curly cues, and, and that seems to work. But for Chelan, big water, big area, I want to get from point A to point B. But then again, I have years of waypoints on my fish finder. And you can all probably attest that have a waypoint, a fish finder you can put waypoints on a GPS one. Isn't it amazing as big a body of water that is? Year after year, you can hit that same waypoint, and those fish are still there. It may be a lake, but there's stuff that'll hold them in. There's a reason why they're at those waypoints, and they'll be there time and time again. So literally, I have a map from Lakeside to probably 25 Mile Creek that I probably wouldn't go 50 feet or 50 yards without hitting a waypoint. So I usually just follow my waypoints. Any other questions? Can I have your map? Huh? Can I have your map? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on Monday. <laughs> you know what, honestly, I, I have waypoints on there. You know what waypoints will tell you? It's all up here. I'm confident with hitting those waypoints. I'll tell you right now, you go down to that blue roof condo, so you go from 180 to 200 feet, you're going to start trolling towards Party Point. Where the fish are. You can't miss them. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard anything on Lake Nancy? It looks like it's going to go there. It does. It looks like it'll go. We won't know as much until June 1st. 
That's I just got, I talked to Travis this last week. They're expecting you know near sixty thousand sockeye. I personally believe we're going to get more than what they're what they're calling for. We're going to have prime water conditions this year. We won't have the same issues we had with the Chinook with a lack of biting. You know, I mean, they just weren't aggressive last year. That's what I went to all U twenties. I caught I was catching all my fish on U twenty flatfish last year, and people thought I was insane. And they, but they were really working for those more sluggish, you know, half cooked fish we were catching. But yeah, it looks like it's good. It looks like we're going to get a go at it. Any other questions? Come on, I know you got some. Don't be afraid, Frank. I know you got tons of questions. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to be following you right on the phone. Go ahead. I've been fishing it a lot last night. Yeah. It seems like it's been dying super early. Is that typical? Okay, so what's happening is those fish are in transition right now. Last year, everything happened earlier. This year, it's more back to a, to a normal pattern for these fish. They are transitioning. There are some things that I have found in the last week that you can get out there and just, I mean, it's like you can't get there early enough. You stick your rods out, bam, 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 and then you've got a, just a dead spot. And all of my clients, I will say the cutthroat have been a life, a life like this. You know, because what we normally can get is we get out there and you get 15 to 20 kokanee, and everyone's like, ooh, this is a great day. I'm like, hey, but if you, I got some fun for you. Let's go out and hammer cutthroat. So the other day I had some clients on the boat that said, well, it was, so three trips ago, and they were like, well, we don't really want to go for cutthroat yet. Let's stick this out. And I'm like, oh, boy. Two hours later, we had not had another bite hitting the exact same line that I was on. All of a sudden, I turned and started to go down lake when the sun, you know, it was like around noon. I'll say, yeah, we hit one. Then we hit one. Then we hit one. It was like all of a sudden, about mid-morning, you know, I'd say 9, 30, 10 o'clock, it started to pick up again. Why, I have no idea. I didn't mark fish. Didn't see them anyway. So what I'm thinking is going on. <coughs> oh, and then two trips after that, the exact same thing happened. What I'm believing that's going on is just like any other fish out there. Um, I get a lot of this on the icicle for springers as well. First thing in the morning, it's always the best bite in the world. You know, every fish is feeding. They're trying to get their belly full. So they're running through the shrimp clouds and the daphnia and they're just all happy and then all of a sudden they go, all right, we're full. And what do you do that right immediately following Thanksgiving dinner? You lay down for a little bit, right? But then all of a sudden the pumpkin pie comes out and ready for you. Do you eat as much as you did the first time around? No. You go and you pick. And that's what I'm saying. You're not going to hit the quads. You're going to just one, 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 one. They're in a feeding frenzy right now. These kokanee and chelan for this time of year are some of the, they're getting fat. Not like last year. They kind of quit growing and stayed skinny. Then, then things are getting huge. So what I think they're doing is they're gorging themselves all night long, all morning. And then all of a sudden they're going, oh, we just got to rest. And then all of a sudden the bite starts to pick up a little bit after they've kind of wore that through. It's not exactly the most normal behavior I've ever seen, but I've talked about this many times on certain other blogs and online. Stick it out, the fish will start biting again. Another thing that I've done a lot, and it'll get this way in May, <coughs> you'll see the pods early in the morning, great big pods of fish, clouds of them down in the lower basin. All of a sudden those clouds go from 40, 50, 60, and now they're at 70, 80, 90. Then they're in 100, 110, 120, and then all of a sudden those clouds have disappeared. A lot of guys will sit out there and they'll putt around at 120, 150 feet of water and go, I can't find them. I'm not catching them. Kokanee are a water sensitive, or a temperature sensitive fish. They like certain water types. They follow down to 120 on the course of they're chasing the shrimp. When they're in those big lit up balls, they're actually in a feeding frenzy. That's why you're hitting them. So you can, you can say, I'm going to catch them when I go through that pond. All of a sudden, when they disperse like that, what they're doing is they're looking for comfortable water to lay in. So, what I always say, wherever you start in the morning, when you start to see those pods in the lower basin here in the next month or so, go down, disappear, bring all your rods back to your starting depth in the morning, and you'll be surprised at how many fish you catch. They just, all of a sudden at noon, you're back up at 50 feet hitting token, and it's cool. Why'd they come back up? Because they're just resting now. They just want good, comfortable water to lay in. So, keep with it. It's, they're in a transition right now.
once they start to really fill up in the monument, which honestly I think they're there now, I think the lower basin's holding fish. Just none of us have had the real guts to go down there and burn a morning chasing them. But I think they're down there. But once they, when they're transitioning like this, you're always going to have a little bit of issue with it dying off. But just stick with it. It will turn back on. But it's funny, all three days, I'm watching all the boats piling off the water. Uh, Big Tim Hedges, that was here a little bit ago, I think he ate three people and left. Um, <laughs> the other day, he posted up, oh, struggle today. We only got four. I know more has seen him start his big motor, and it was one after the other. And I text him, I'm like, where are you going? They're just starting to bite again. Oh, I'm out of here. And then we post up three. So just stick with it. They'll, come, they'll turn back on. Anything else? How big was a derby fish last year? The derby fish was tiny, and the guy that caught it, even smaller. <laughs> no, what was it, 1.93? 1.93, but I think only like 18 inches, 18 and a third? The top two were torpedoes. Yeah, they, they never got fat last year. The year before that, I think we were at 2.5? 2 2.5. About 2.5. I think this year... Just to put my little estimate on it, I think the winning fish will be 18 inches and 2.3 pounds. I really do. I think somebody's going to get it done. I really do. Uh, and it won't be Zach catching it. But yeah, it's so we're probably looking at around a two pound fish and winning again this year. The thing is, they are getting fat. Yes, they're packing it on right now. And you're not seeing that green, what do I want to call it? Ex ex excrement coming out of them. So the Daphnia hatch is not real hard and heavy yet. Their meat is still blood red, which tells you they're still just targeting shrimp. Um, once you start to see that green stuff come out of their pooper when you catch them, that means they're feeding hard on Daphnia, which means they're basically just swimming around with their mouths open. That's when they really start packing on, packing on the fat. I really think by the middle of May we'll be catching some close to three pound company out of there. Because they are just getting so beefed up on shrimp right now. You're catching a 12-inch fish that have like got shoulders on usually a 17-inch fish. Not quite American Lake footballs, but pretty close. I think next year we're in for some monster fish. I really do. Yeah. Don't you start doing that before you find them, before you even see them? Starting depth on water? Like where my boat is? No, like how deep are you starting at? 50 feet? I'm I bet starting about 50. 50, 60, 70. I don't, I haven't seen them do the big shallow up yet, which is the next transitional move when they get down in the lower base and all of a sudden I'll start at 35, 40, 45, 50. I keep everything super shallow. They haven't quite done that yet because they still are feeding on the shrimp part. And the shrimp are deeper than Daphne. And so I've been starting, you know, sort of shallow. 50, 60, 70, 80, or, you know, I normally only run four rods and I'll just keep them 20 feet apart. And then I'll adjust those to go through pods. I mean, honestly, everybody wonders how I go out and get 40 or 50 of them in just four hours. It's because I keep all my gear right together. You know, there's you got some guys that'll run their gear 60, 80, 120, 150. Well, you're only going to catch one at a time because you you know you can't move it all. A lot of the times I'll be out there like this time here running 50. So my deepest rod will be, let's say, at 70 feet. And then I'll have 65 feet on the deep one on this side. And then out the back, I'll have uh, 60 on this side. And I'll try to have like a dropper rod or a stacker rod at six, or, you know, 55. So I'm covering like 20 feet of water. But when I see a pod come through, you'll see my chubby self running around the boat, reeling up my riggers or dropping them all down. Because I want to hit quads. And we all know that you're only going to land 50%, so you got to hit quads to land two you got to do that 30 times to catch 20 at all. So, yeah, I usually keep mine real close together right now. I'm running pretty shallow, but not as shallow as where they will be coming. We keep up this next 80-degree stretch we're getting next week. There, they'll be in the basin. Because you can already see the water. The color's changing. The water is starting to turn a little green. And it's showing that it never turns total green. But you can see that it's getting those micro particles in there. The fish will hit the lower basin and they're going to shallow up those taffy clouds. Yes? What do you think about snubbers? Next question. No, I do not use snubbers. I 
Last year and the years previous, I was always running a uh, braid. I have since went away from that. I told everybody last year, actually, at the, at the seminar here, that I was planning on making a change, and I finally did. Do you run braid on your rod? You know what? I, I switched out to all mono. You will be surprised at how few less fish you, or how few you lose compared to having that braid on it. It is unbelievable. Again, I, you know, I was stubborn, told everybody, you know, I know what I'm doing, you know, I've caught all these fish. But I got tired of hooking 100 fish when I have 25. I mean, it was, so I went to all mono this year, and I did actually, I run 15 pound test mono all the way through. I lose far less fish. I don't like the snubbers. I've just never really had a use for them. I know a lot of people use them and have good luck with them. I just, I don't know. But if you go to all model, you'll see your, your landing ratio will go up, I'll bet just as much as the snubbers do. The snubbers had a big, oh, so real quick to hit on. The snubbers, their big thing when those came out was because everybody was running pop gear with max drag. You know, when we used to fish down at Lakeside, everybody had a Ford Fender on there that was like reeling in a Ford Fender. <laughs> and so that's when those snubbers came out. Because what would happen is you'd have that thing and it's, you know, sitting there, Robin on the pole, the pole's all maxed out already, so when the fish bit it, it didn't have any give at all. So that's when those snubbers, they started coming out with those, was to run those gang trolls. So now that we're running a lot less drag on our dodgers, I think I think the snubbers are a thing in the past. I don't think they're really good at all. So, anything else? Keep in mind I haven't had that yet. Maybe there's a <laughs> we all good? Like I said, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to look me up online. Look me up on Facebook. I hold no secrets at all. I love the sport. It's great to make a living at it, but I'll, I'll answer any questions you have. Give me a call, preferably not too late. Uh, and again, if you have a chance, if you're computer savvy at all, have a kid, grandkid, anybody, have them get you on Facebook on Northwest Kokanee Addicts. And everything you need to know, there's tons of people on there willing to help. And if they don't, I'll ban them. So, I kind of go on a power trip. But, uh, yeah. So, hey, you keep laughing, Zach. I'll ban you guys. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you all for coming out. I really appreciate it. And have a good derby. Thanks again for tuning in today, guys. What a great seminar put on here by Something Catchy. Thanks again, Sam and Frank, for all the information you shared. Good luck in the derby, guys. It's going to be a great fun one this year, and good fishing. Take care, guys, and fish on.